What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Nord and Block podcast. I almost said Nordcast there. It's been a hot minute since I've actually recorded a actual podcast. And what you guys just heard is our brand new intro. Uh, it is a work in progress. It is not entirely what we want to do or what I want to do. That's LeBlanc's first time hearing it. It might sound a little bit weird on LeBlanc's end, but, you know, you get the picture. Uh, I'm Nord. That's Block. LeBlanc, how we doing? Fantastic. It has been a while since we have recorded a podcast. It has. It's been a long time. Uh, I think the last episode we recorded was our Central Division preview last Monday, so a little over a week ago now. And we kind of figured, you know, LeBlanc was going on a trip. We're kind of like, okay, we're going to just, you know, wait until the following week because we just grinded out those previews. It's preseason. You know, there's not going to be a lot to talk about, right? Well, we were wrong. Uh, this is going to be one hell of an episode here for you guys. I want to start with, oops, sorry. I want to start off with the hottest topic right now. Um, and no, it is not Arbor Jack Eye. It is Jeremy Swayman of the Boston Bruins. He is still not signed to a contract. I want to remind you that at the time of recording of this podcast, it is October 2nd right now. And we still have no contract. And it seems like, you know, they might be kind of close, but at the same time, they might seem so far away. So I want to start off with a few comments that were made uh, this past week. The first one coming from Cam Neely, who said when asked about, oh, oh my God, sorry, someone's spamming me right now. When asked about what the offers for Swayman are, things and that and such, uh, Neely basically just said, I'm not going to get into the weeds of what they want, but I have 64 million reasons why I'd be playing right now. And that quote to me seemed like it was trying to vilify Swayman, and I don't think it was very cool at all, even if it was true, to say that out there. I don't know how LeBlanc feels about that. Oh, Seabass, why did you go and say that? Um... Yeah, it's basically, it puts pressure on Swayman's camp, and to say that, uh, to say that, I think is a little, it's, it, 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 it's a shot, it's a shot, uh, but I think what it's worse is what happened after the, like, what, the events that preceded this, when Swayman's agent made a statement. Yeah, that definitely was, um, what made this look a lot worse, so I'll pull up the statement right here. But it's from Lewis Gross, who, listen, is not the most reliable person in the world out there. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but here's this statement that he put out from Lewis Gross, who represents Jeremy Swayman. Normally, I do not release statements or discuss negotiations through the media. However, in this case, I feel I need to defend my client. At today's press conference, $64 million was referenced. This was the first time that number was discussed in our negotiations prior to the press conference. No offer was made reaching that level. We are extremely disappointed. This was not fair to Jeremy. We will take a few days to discuss where we go from here. So that was the really big thing that made a lot of people be like, oh, this is ugly. This is real ugly. So it seems like Neely lied about that money. And from what we found out in the following days, he was lying, but like it wasn't that far off. Apparently they were offering him, I think it was like 7.8, right? For mm -hmm. the next eight years, that was what they were at. So $62 million. It's nothing like, it's not like... It's still $2 million more. He wasn't that far off, but yeah, he still lied. So that definitely makes things interesting here. We're going to see what happens. Again, Lewis Gross is the same person who was involved in the William Nylander standout that happened. Um, how long ago was that, by the way? That was a, that's, a while ago. That's got to be at least five years ago now. Yeah, it's been a while. I think, what, uh, 2018? I think it's 2018. I know. I've, I was still in college. Yeah. Because Mar Marner was 2019, so that, well, Marner wasn't as bad, but Marner still held out for a longer period of time. Mm. But again, it's interesting. I don't think we're getting a signing by opening night, though. No, I don't. Just saying. And um, especially with the Bruins picking up a goaltender today, that doesn't really scream 
hope for a fan base that wants Gary Sharon to be signed. Uh, I do want to say, I think when you negotiate with them, when you bring the media into this, it just gets ugly. When Neely brought it in, got ugly. But then when Gross brought it up, that's ugly. So it's a bad look on the organization. It's a bad look um, on, if it's a bad look on Swayman's camp, it's a bad look all around. Yeah, it is. So, we're going to see what happens. I don't think we're going to see it by opening night. This could be something that maybe goes right up until the December 1st deadline, which for those who don't know, if they don't sign a contract back that by then, Swayman can't play for the rest of the season. Now, we know how LeBlanc feels about Yunas, Pas- I'm sorry, Corpusalo, um, but LeBlanc, does your opinion change on the Boston Bruins if they don't have swimming for a long period of time? No, I think my my take is that I think the Bruins are going to be fine. I think Corpusalo actually might thrive in this situation behind a stronger decor. If you, I've seen him in inter- interviews. He looks like he's a whole different goaltender. He doesn't talk like he's a zombie anymore. Um, I think him. He's focusing on it on his game and. I feel like the Bruins have the a good enough roster that to make it with Corpusalo, they could for let's say until November. Do I like Corpusalo? If Cor- Swayman's not gonna play for the year, do I like that option for the Bruins? Not really, but in the short term, it could be good. But um, I do feel like the Bruins and Swayman will eventually come to an agreement. It may, it's not going to be my opening night, though. I feel like this is going to be dragged out into possibly November. Yeah, I'm, I'm in that same situation, too. Um, I think that if you're without Swayman for maybe the first month, that might be a good, that might, well, not a good thing, but it won't, I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think, but I don't know. Maybe, Cor- and like, listen, the Bruins have a history of tr- not, I don't know about turning around goalies' careers, but developing really good goaltenders. And I think that Corpus Allo is coming into a unique situation where we're going to see if, you know, maybe the year in Ottawa was a fluke or he is really this Corpus Allo that, that LeBlanc loves to, loves to call him on here. But I don't know. Um, he is your projected starter right now. I don't have a ton of faith in him, but we're going to see what happens. But again, with Swayman... We'll never know. So maybe by the time this podcast drops, we have a signing, but I highly doubt it. Yeah. Um, I do want to also mention that if Jeremy Swayman is not signed past the December 1st deadline, not all, not only can he not play for the rest of the year, he also becomes a UFA next summer. He does. So it's going it, to it, – like, listen, like, they trade Olmark – um, in what was, looks like an absolute, like, it, it honestly looks like a fleece for Ottawa. Like, you know, things are going to develop the way they are. We haven't really seen it, but right now it looks like a, a huge win for Ottawa. And now you have your other goalie, maybe even requesting a trade. They're not going to like, and they even said today, like Swayman and Gross aren't going to like go to this rash decision immediately, but it's, it's out there. They would consider it for sure. Because of how this has transpired and the way Neely and Sweeney and others have treated him. So, I don't know. We're going to see what happens. But if Boston loses Swayman after trading away Olmark, I think that things are going to go to hell there in, in Boston management. And I think some people are going to get fired. Yeah. Um, you Looking at this, if you, if you told me uh, in May that Boston was going to be without its two goaltenders... The following season, I would have called you uh, many, ma- many names, many names. I wouldn't have believed, and I, I would have questioned if you if you knew what you're talking about because it's such a loony bin idea, like a loony bin thought. But yeah, this could be a reality though. That's 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 the one thing that's scary. Is that this could definitely be a reality. The percentage is is higher than zero. <clears throat> that's not a good thing at all. Um. Actually, like, I don't, you know, if you told me in May, I probably maybe could have seen it happening because there were already bad blood with Swayman and the Bruins already because of last year. Um, and then Olmark, there were already rumors of them trading him. So could have, but I would have never expected it to go this way with all the comments I've heard in the media and such. But again, 
We're going to see what happens. We'll see what transpires of this. But right now, doesn't look that good. Um, let's get into... All right, let's 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 just get through what happened in the Toronto-Montreal game and the Ottawa-Montreal game. Now, I know LeBlanc w- w- wants to come on here so badly and talk about what happened with Ottawa, but I want to start with Toronto first. Uh, so, Cedric Paré, not Cedric Pear, um, that's what I've been calling him, apparently. Um, he injured Patrick Laine on a knee-on-knee hit. Whether or not you think it's dirty, whether or not you think it's a cheap shot, whether you think it's any of that, it sucks for Laine. I mean, you saw what um, when Marty St. Louis came out and made his presser. He said that, you know, St. Louis said that Laine looked happy to be here, looked happy to come in. He looked like he could have been his old self again. Uh, and then this happens, which is just absolutely devastating. And to somebody who is like a career AHL or at best. So, yeah. LeBlanc, what do you think about uh, just Line A? I, I, it, it sucks because Line A, like, like you said, he looks genuinely, he was excited. He was excited to get it going. Montreal, new fresh start. Uh, and then to have another setback like this injury, it, 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 it's a brutal bro, blow to Montreal. The good news is, though, he's only going to be out, only a sprained knee because it looked oh, like, the pitch we saw looked like it was going to be a, a lot worse. Yeah, it definitely looked like it was going to be a lot worse. He's only out two to three months. Now, obviously, David Reinbacker uh, did not get that very well. He's out five to six months, which is basically the season, which is really unfortunate because I thought Reinbacker looked like he could have made the team, to be honest with you. Um, I would have taken him over a few of those defensemen in, in, in Toronto, in Montreal. But, again, I don't know. Um, we'll see what, what, what happens, um, with Lion A. Hopefully he can come back, but you know, it, it's a brutal, brutal injury for sure. And hopefully, you know, it, it's good that, um, it's only that short of a time. Cause I think he's going to be back. What? December? It looks like January? mid, mid December, mid to late December. That's a good thing, considering the fact that it could have been the season. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes some of those people on Twitter look less stupid. Um, just, just saying. Um, <laughs> um, as for Paré, Paré is going to be interesting. Um, I don't know. Like LeBlanc, do you think that it's a dirty play? I have it pulled up right now. I think it's it. a dirty play, but I don't feel. I don't know. It doesn't. It didn't look intentional. He doesn't go in. With the knee. He kind of just like skates forward and runs out of room. So I don't think it he kind is. Of looks like, sorry. He kind of looks like an idiot on this play. Like you look at it like he looks like he's just standing there. Like kind of gliding essentially. Just ooh, watching ooh, Line ooh. come in. Oh, par- yeah. Paré, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I don't, this isn't basketball, so you can't really set screens. But like it kind of looks like that. Yeah. So. I think it's a dirty play, yes. I don't think it was intentional, though, to be honest with you. So it's kind of how kind of how I look at it. Uh, and then Arbor Jack Guy decided to be like, oh, I'm going to kill you afterwards, uh, and then decided to uh, beat him up and got fined um, $3,385 uh, $3, uh, for unsportsmanlike conduct. Now, Arbor Jack Guy is a good transition into what happened in Ottawa last night, which is getting a lot of people talking. You would think that with all this, it would be regular season, right? Yeah, I know. Like with all these hits, all this controversy, you think? And and LeBlanc's posting TikToks, guys. Like, we're in regular season form here, and it's preseason with this play. So, I want to start out with the first one. Uh, Kirby Doc uh, gets injured off of a Ridley Gregg hit. So, LeBlanc, you're the Sens fan. I'm going to let you take it away here before I talk about my thoughts. All right, so this is a routine play. Doc has the puck, and he dumps it off to the uh, ha- the next Habs player. And then he's not doesn't have his head up. He's not looking what's going on. And Greg does level him. Greg levels him at the chest height. Doc is also 6'4", compared to Ridley Gregg, who is six foot. So it's a, it's a height difference. So, Greg... Doc had the puck on this play. I think that's a, that's a clean textbook hit. Good, good, ch- good check, um, ch- uh, chest contact there. 
There's nothing wrong with the hit if he has the puck. He doesn't have the puck, though. So it is interference. It is a two-minute penalty. And that's where I have. Doc did return to the game. Yes, he did. Yeah, he returned. I don't... Yeah. I don't think... I think that had it not been late, again, as LeBlanc said, um, I think that it it would have been a clean textbook hockey hit because I'm looking at... I look at both angles. I don't see head contact. I don't see any of that. The only thing that I could really say is head contact is like maybe Greg and Doc's heads boink together. That might be the only thing that is head contact. But I didn't see anything there that was definitive. It is late, though. And Ridley Greg even admitted that, saying that, you know, it was a little bit late and that, you know, those guys stood up for him and stuff and he had to keep his head up out there, which was the quote that LeBlanc sent to me earlier. Um, but I just want to say, good thing Doc's okay, first off. I, I want to say that. I'm not, you know, obviously. But it, it, it doesn't justify what Arbor Jackeye, LeBlanc's favorite player in the NHL, did next. Uh, so, LeBlanc, you want to take us through this? Okay, so, basically, this is a play where Stutzla has the puck. And once again, it's a vi- it's a very similar situation, but there are more, it's a more spread out situation. So he was in the open ice, he dumps it off to the next player, and then, then the defender goes away from Stutzla, and Stutzla skates in. Jackeye is on Stutzla's left-hand side, and you see Jackeye kind of go down, and you know he's hitting. Jackeye then leaves his feet, and he's aiming for Stutzla's head. He misses, but Stutzla's stick is right, is right up behind his face, and he blows right through the stick. You can see his elbow comes up, leaves his feet, and it's a text, and whether or not you think his, oh, um, well, he didn't hit the head. His intent was to injure. That is, that's the main issue here. He, Strutzler then goes down, uh, and then Brady then has to go do captain things. He had to answer the bell. Yeah. I think that that's, I think that's totally fair. I, I mean, there were some people who were like, oh, you know, I think it's, I think it's totally fair for him to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I don't know. I made a TikTok on it. It actually, like, blew up by my account. It has, like, 2,000 likes and, like, 400 comments, which I'm sure, LeBlanc, I don't think you've been there yet, but I'm sure you would have a field day looking through all those comments. Oh, it, it's, so, it's so fun to read the comments. And I don't, I don't like to generalize fan bases, but, like, some fan bases don't like to admit when their player is in the wrong and some fan bases don't like to when like, like it's kind of like when you see something and i show it to you and you say that didn't happen like you're doing a jedi mind trick that's what majority yeah. of montreal fans that i've seen have been saying um do i think and i and i'll be honest i gonna commend the refs on this play for kicking jack guy because if Jack guy stayed in that game. That game, this game could have boiled over. Probably, yeah. I f- I feel like there would have been someone else who could have gotten hurt or would have gone after Jack guy, which yeah. it could have been. Um, yeah, that could have been ugly. Yeah. And then after that, the Sens also pulled Shabbat from the game for a precautionary reason. And now we 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 learned today that it was because they didn't want to get one of their better players injured, especially one of their more injury prone yeah. players. But like I yeah. think that Ar- Arbor Jack guy also, I don't I don't like to call people out. <sighs> Arbor Jack guy is being outplayed by Jaden Struble right now. He is like he, and it's funny because he he's he's with uh, Struble I think on a pairing. He is like Matt Rempe in a way, where he needs to make these plays and fight to stay in the league. I'm sorry, he's he's a lot like Matt Rempe in that way. Yes, and I want to just mention this. There's mentioned on uh, I I was listening to Locked On Montreal. I like to lo- get the plug into mo- a lot of the podcasts around the league, and um, I'm just going to quote quote from them that Montreal's first three games: Toronto, Boston, Ottawa. Oh, those are three games where I will tell you right now emotions are high are high in all those games. Those are Montreal's I would say three main rivals. Probably, yeah, yeah. And do you want Arbor Jack guy doing Arbor Jack guy things? I don't know. Because, like, if Arbor Jack guy plays with the way he's played these past preseason games, that's going to cost Montreal long. Like, like, Jack guy is the reason Montreal lost the game last night. Ottawa scored three times on that power play. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, um, so, yeah. And I do want to say, I want to go back to the, the, the par, the, the, the what's it, situation yeah. real quick. I also think that that's what art, what Jack, I get Jack has to, has to, you know, someone has to answer for injuring line A, but like that looked more like an assault. That looked more like an assault. Like he's just like, I think, I think if I went up to someone on the street and let's say somebody, you know, pushes, let's see if someone pushes you. And then I go up behind and start like just pumbling them in the back of the head with, with, with a big glove on. Yeah. And not only that, like how, like. Like, going back to Stu, like, how does that... Ju- oh, he's mad about Line A. How does that justify him injuring Stu? Like, yeah, no, <laughs> like, that makes no that sense. Makes it at all. And I, I find it funny that, you know, like, as Ridley, Ridley even said he was a bad hit on Doc and he should, probably should have, should have read the situation better. And Ridley just took accountability. I'm just going to read you a quote here from Jaden Struble uh, about... Because I always say, like, my, like, like here's the thing, Ottawa... The new regime is very good about taking accountability for everything that's been done on and off the ice. So, this is a quote from Jaden Struble, and I'm going to read this to you right now, okay? Okay. Arbor is great at making sure there is accountability. I know a couple guys went up to Greg. I went up to see him. He was going to answer the bell, and he didn't. So, things escalated and just, and just took their own path, but I don't put it on Arbor for hitting Stu. Here's the thing, though. Um, literally two minutes later, Jane Struble decked Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then later in the game, Doc uh, Doc fought Greg. So yeah. How does this? How here's the thing. If this hit was on Ridley Greg, I would maybe understand it more. But once you go after like Doc was probably the uh, much best player on the ice last night. I will say that it's. And it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a bad read by Greg, but going like, head hunting, leaving your feet, that's not okay. And I'm just saying if if we're if these were regular season games, if that if that happens to Paré, Paré, par, I don't still know how to say his name in a regular season game, if that happens to student regular season game, these are probably suspensions. Probably, yeah. Yeah. And, like, we think, oh, no one gets in the preseason. Ridley Gregg got suspended in the preseason. His first ever, ever National Hockey League, like, experience. He got he got suspended because he clipped Line A. Not Line A. He clipped uh, Dubois. Excuse me. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. That's a weird thing. So, um, and I just want to point this out because uh, uh, it's been mentioned to me. George Peros is the uh, current uh, head of player safety. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that. Next. Yeah, and much, and you know, he was a very famous goon, very famous goon for the Ducks and for who else, Evan? Uh, I wasn't alive for him when he was playing. That might make you feel old, but the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal Canadiens were his final team, and there's been a sense around the league that Peros has a bias towards Montreal because he likes playing there so much. Yeah, and I, I, I like. And I always say, player safety is always so inconsistent. It's a hard job. It's I'm going to say this. Yeah. It's a hard job to do. It's hard to be consistent. But I feel like you should hire people who don't have bias. What, what I think... I, I got I'm not saying so- Carlos is biased, but like still. I know. I, I got a solution, though. You need to take a guy who's, who's you know, seen the game, doesn't have any biases whatsoever, and just, and just like... Or, or to get somebody who's never never seen the game before and just like sit him down. <laughs> Like oh, like oh shit, oh shit. This match. Uh, that might not be such a good idea. That's almost like putting you in, in in the development of player safety. I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to see a world where the block. I, is, you, uh, you would not want me to get player safety. Any Leafs or Habs get oh ten games. What send them to the, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Done for the season. Like you're gonna get blacklisted from the NHL, like Todd Bertuzzi. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I just think there needs to be. Like I get Paris is the head of player safety, but he needs to do a they need a they need to need to increase player safety. Just like the because you can't say you care about player safety and then just ignore ignore the headshots. Ignore someone getting injured over a hit that could have been avoided easily. Exactly, and that that's the thing. Because like I, I honestly I wasn't if Jack I got one game I'd be I, I'd be content, content with that. I think I think what he did in the Toronto game was worse because that's not a hockey play. 
He came up from. Didn't you like go up to him from behind? From behind, and, and here's the thing: when you you know how big the glove, like when you don't take off your glove, like that's not a hockey play. If you're gonna, I have an idea how much of a chicken you have to. I know. Do that. Like, like <laughs> also, our Jack guy's like six seven. He's huge. Pear, I don't know. Par, par, sorry. Yeah. He is not that big. Yeah. So, I had someone in my live today. He's like, "Oh, they're the same height." I'm like, "Where? Show me." You got evidence of that? Because everywhere I've read says right. no. And it, all the and the video I saw clearly sees that Pari's a smaller guy. Yeah. Like, it's also well, out of your weight class. I don't know. I just feel like our way... I think I, um, I mentioned this... I saw this on Twitter from our, our, our good buddy, uh, Mike Bartner. Mike Bartner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our good buddy, Mike Bartner, and saying how, you know, Rempe... Red Bay and Jack are basically the same player. They provide they, limit limited offense, but they're they're just goons, and it, it's not much. it's not good for the game. Like you, like in this day and age, player safety is like the number one thing. The, they're old school players. They play they play rough, but I feel like they should not be everyday players. Yeah, listen, there. I made a TikTok, and this is this is based off of Matt Rempe, not um, Jackye. But I made a TikTok in March when Matt Rempe played in the stadium series and was fighting and got all that recognition. I said that he was good for the game, but all of these dirty plays I'm seeing from Jackye, even some of the plays that I see from Rempe, it's not good from the game. Fighting is one thing. Going out and injuring players... Not, not, yeah. Not, 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 not. We, we can't have like a bounty gate in the NHL. Like it, it's not good. And I want to, to say, Jack Guy versus Ottawa might be one of the most like notorious like player versus franchise rivalry because this stems all the way back from the prospects games when Jack Guy was signed by Montreal and he was pur- purposely going out of his way to injure uh, injure Sens players. And that call me bias, it's in right there, but. It goes sense all the way back to there. Sense from Brady not wanting to give Jack the light of day until he did something stupid. And it's funny when I saw Norris Norris in the lineup last night for his first game, like in preseason. So I said, "Hmm, Jack has to do something stupid, isn't he?" And I said that thinking he was going to go after Norris, but I was half right. So I'm half right on that. <laughs> you were also yeah. half wrong though. Yeah, but I feel. I want to be right about that though. No, no, I feel like this, like. I'm going to just turn this into our next topic. The preseason is way too long. Yeah, so I have a list here of uh, players who have been injured during the preseason, and they are not no-names. Not one of these players is a no-name player. Uh, Artemi Panarin, Ryan Lindgren, David Reinbacker, Patrick Laine, Macklin Celebrini, Tim Stutzla, Thomas Shabbat, Brady Kachuk, and Drew Doughty. That, that's not a that, short net. That's quite yeah. that's quite a pool of players right there. It is, yeah, yeah, and it's a pool of a lot of really good players. Too. Yeah, you, you, got you got young, young players. You got guys who have been in the league for ten years. Like, you got to shorten the preseason after this. Hey, I'm sorry, I'll be honest. The way that the way that players train nowadays, they when the season ends, they take like two weeks off and they're back at it again. Pretty much, like yeah. when they get to training camp, they're ready to go. Like they don't, we don't need. I feel like we're at what? It's eight games this year. Eight, eight, seven games. That's too many games. I feel like we could do four games. Like a four-game preseason, I think is perfect. Like you get two games to show off to then guys who are, are going to make the team to show you it, and then you have the two games to you know make, make the cuts and put the final touches on your roster. I just want to say this. Uh, well. Teams are required to play six to eight games in the preseason, which you add that up, that's almost a 90-game NHL season and not even including playoffs. I think that four, maybe five is fair because you can get two games out of your A and B squad, maybe three out of one of the other ones. And I think that makes perfect sense. And rest some of your bi- some of your stars don't may- maybe only play them one or two games of a four or five game preseason. Don't play them a substantial amount of time. Now, obviously, injuries happen. Shit happens. Mm. But 
of course, like that's going to reduce injuries. And I think that I think that that way is more fair. It is already being talked about in what's the upcoming CBA agreement, uh, which we haven't talked a ton about, but apparently that's going to start. They're going to start discussing in Janu- on January 1st of this coming year. But we did get a quote from Pierre Lebron who said, the NHL and NHLPA have already chatted about it and will do it more seriously in CBA talks, but they are thinking about reducing the preseason to four games, which what I said, but this is another conversation we can have. They're going to add two games to the regular season to make it 84. I am completely against that. That's funny because I'm actually for that. Really? So here, what? here's the deal. The NHL, the league has expanded since we've had an 80 game season. season. I think, and this is just me being an old head, you should play every team in your division four times. Wait a second. So, if you said you said that if the NHL expands, they should expand the, the games? Yes. So, I feel, no, so... The NHL has expanded. Okay, right, right. So eight, 82 games was bef- when we had tw- when we had tw- 30 teams. You played. Okay. So when you had 30 teams, you played every every team in your division four or five times. Vegas comes in, Seattle comes in. You lose four games to them. So example: Ottawa plays Toronto three times this year. They played Montreal three times last year. We saw the Battle of Alberta only get three games. That takes away, I feel like, the games in your division are more important than the games out from another conference, for example. I get... I, from a marketing standpoint, I I, I, I'm like for it, like, but it's already a long season as it is. Yes, that's that's what I... That's they why they I, really need to come to a middle ground on scheduling. I really think you should play the... Let's say, I think you should play every team in your conference four times. You should play every you should play every team in the other conference. I think only once, or twice. Once or Maybe. twice. Yeah, I don't. It depends on the team, to be honest. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like, and if they do expand, which apparently is coming in the next five to five to seven years, we didn't even get to talk about that. I oh know. Um, I think we did actually. No. Yeah, but if they're gonna add more teams, they need to increase the schedule. They do. No, I absolutely agree with that. They're gonna have. They're gonna have to. Because I think otherwise, it... like, and and the reason why, like, you know, you see it, you see every team play in your arena is because there are owners and there are people who who want to get the Anaheim Ducks or the Edmonton Oilers or like the Utah Hockey Clubs or the Ottawa Senators to play in their arenas out east or out west. Like they want those teams from across the country to. You know they want every team in their in their arena is, mm-hmm. is what they is what they want, and I understand that. I I kind of am for that, but I think that there's better ways that you can do that. Like if you add four new teams, you expand to thirty six, you need to make a ninety two or hundred game schedule. Hundred game schedule. I know that sounds insane, especially right. with a lot. It'd be a lot of back. To, it'd be a very. You need to add at least then two bye weeks though per team. The season would be so goddamn long. I know. Not. I know that's the MLB. Which, like started in January, end in July. Which like, is why I, I hear like I, which is why I'm kind of against expansion. Yeah, that's the other thing. I don't. I, we didn't. I I know we discussed it because like we talked about the Ottawa Arena thing in our last mm-hmm. episode, and then we talked about expansion. But yeah, like if you expand, you're gonna have to expand the schedule, especially if you get to like 36 teams. Yeah, oh. uh, like, like I, this is why I'm, this is why I'm like a very against expansion. Like, what's the, like, we we got a good thing going. We, we got a good thing going. Why screw with it now? We do, but I think they want to market themselves as the biggest league in the world. Yeah, if they pass thirty two, they'll be more than the NFL. So that would be the biggest league in the world. And it already looks like it's going to happen. I think we're getting at least thirty four. Yeah, probably thirty six. Probably, probably. I think thirty six. You're gonna have two in the east, two in the west. They um, probably want to get forty though. At some they, point, they, I, 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 like, I feel like they'll go. If you go forty, then there will be a hundred game schedule. Yes, and that, and, and I feel like, could you like, like baseball at a hundred and sixty two games? 
you know, listen, baseball is a different sport. I understand mm-hmm. that. But, like, imagine hockey, the sport that you play. It is a grueling, fighting, high effort, high it, speed sport. A hundred games of that, it takes, load management is going to be insane. Mm-hmm. It takes a toll, and you would have you would have to put in load management at that point. Exactly, hundred yeah, percent. Because you look at all the ba- like, I think Ottawa played the most back to backs in the league last year at fourteen. Yeah, that number would probably that double. number would double. So it'd be twenty eight big games, uh, twenty eight back to backs. That's twenty. What's twenty eight times two, Evan? I'm not good at math. Uh, give me a second. Uh, twenty eight times two is fifty six. That's fifty six back to back games. God damn. That's that would be over half half the league schedule. You would have you would have days where like every team would play back to back days. Yeah, it takes. Oh, so this takes a toll. Like hockey's a physical sport. It's a contact sport. It takes a toll on your body. Exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, even then, like, you talk about the game schedule, we would probably have to change the playoff format, too. Playoff format would be gutted. Yeah, no, it would be, you would have, if it's a 36 team, you'd probably have, like, a 22 or 21 team playoff. Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I'm, I, I'm kind of, I, I would be, I'm, it would make sense. It does make sense. But again, yeah. as you said, we got a good thing going. Why would we want to change it? But the NHL wants money. <laughs> we got the money, baby! Like, that's, that's, that's literally what Gary is saying when he gets his expansion team. It is. It's, it's Gary Bettman. But be I'll be honest, Gary Bettman's getting up there. We're going to have to have a new commissioner soon. I, I, I'm not being serious. That's not me being a hater. That's me be, genuinely saying that Gary Bettman might retire. It's going to feel really weird. It would be, because he's been the commissioner. I think he's the only commissioner. Life. Yeah. Who, because yeah. what, Clarence Campbell was before him? Clarence Campbell was the original commissioner, I think. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I can't even name you someone who would be the commissioner. Like what, Bill Daly? Bill Daly. It would probably be Bill Daly. My ball dog, Bill Daly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know. Um, let's move on from that. Wait, 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 no, wait, wait, listen. If Adam Silver can be bald in the commissioner, so can Bill Daly. Goddamn, goddamn right he can. All right, let's move on from that. That took us a while. This is going to be a long one. Um, let me see if there's anything else that we did not talk about. Uh, Rasmus Dahlin was named the Buffalo Sabres captain. Uh, expected. I'm not going to lie. I, would, I was expecting, expecting that one. So, yeah. a guy, young, young guy. A young guy signs long term captain. Yeah, I, I I think that it was the right move to go. Um, did we talk about Cole Perfetti? No, we did not because did not. Uh, that was the day that we uploaded our last one. Uh, Perfetti signed a two year, three point two five. That's a great contract steal. Um, especially if Perfetti becomes really good, that man could ask for a lot of money down the road. So I mm-hmm. think that's a really good deal. Yeah, I do like the deal. Excuse me. Uh, I think it's a good deal for Perfetti. Uh, he gets the bridge that uh, that he wanted. He gets Winnipeg gets a young player under contract, and it doesn't take him to it takes him to another RFA. So it's perfect for I think it's perfect for both sides. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, going back to Buffalo, they played in the Global Series against Red Bull. Red Bull, uh, they beat them five nothing. Red Bull gives you wings, but not goals. Not yeah, not goals. They, they don't give you goals. They, they give you wings, but not goals for sure. I always find the Global Series really cool because they go out and play teams in those like leagues, and mm. that's funny because sometimes those teams in those leagues end up winning. Like yeah, I would like to see them. I would like, like I always like I remember I think one of the years the Islanders went over. I don't know where, but they, I think it was to Germany, and they played like Amsburg Panthers or something like that. And I remember. I ever look well. Oh my god, they're losing. <laughs> um, hang on a second. Let me Google something here. So, the Flyers, I remember, played a game in Prague mm. um, to open up their season the one year, and they lost to the team that they played against. I can't. I can't remember uh, what the team was called, but um, I'm trying to find it real quick. But they 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 lost to a team. That isn't in their league and below them. That is the most Philadelphia Flyers thing I've ever heard in my life. But 
that's one thing that I remember a lot from that um, that series when the Flyers went there. But yeah, Global Series is already pre- is always pretty cool. Um, that's it for news. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Not that I can think of right now. There wasn't really anything that like struck struck me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, like we already talked about like the suspensions and stuff. That's kind of what's made this week kind of like you know newsworthy. But apart mm. from that, it's been a lot of guys who have been you know um, on waivers and such. You know, there's a few names that have been put on waivers, but nothing that's really of note. Uh, so we're going to get into our um, coaching hot seat. Tiers? Yes, we're going go to go get, get to that right now. Okay. Okay, so LeBlanc came up with this idea for us to do. We are going to be tier ranking every coach in the NHL. Um, even Arizona's on there, too. Wow, look at that. Um, um, and we're going to... <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We know it's Utah. It's not a big deal. Um, we're going to talk about are they on the hot seat? Are they not on the hot seat? Were they just hired? You know, we're going to go through all of that. Uh, so, LeBlanc, would you like to explain the columns? So, we have the columns uh, just hired, coaches who were literally just hired. Yeah, um, literally just hired. There's going to be a few guys in there. There's a few guys in there. Uh, cold as ice is going to be guys who. Like, they're safe. Like, even if they have a pretty bad year, I would say they're pretty safe. Uh, warm coaches who, like, I still think they keep their job, but they had a bad season. Maybe we would get a, um, maybe they would get consideration for being terminated. Um, flaming hot. These are coaches who, if they have a bad season, they're probably done. Probably. If, if they're probably done or they be considered for a replacement. On fire is that you need, if you don't make the playoffs, or if you don't, if you fail at things, you're gone. If you have a bad start, you're probably gone. Probably, yeah. Yeah, and I have a list of all the NHL head coaches right here. So we will be getting everybody's name, because I am, I'm pretty good at head coaches, but I don't, I'm still up and down on, on some on some of them. I so, know everyone, don't worry. All right, so um, we're going to do, do is we're going to do what we usually do, is we're going to go in order. And we're going to go me, you, me, you, or however, however it goes. So, Yeah, and we'll do our favorite teams. All right, you are up first with the Anaheim Ducks. All right, so the Ducks. Hi, Cooper. Uh, the Ducks, uh, the head coach is Greg Cronin. He got hired last season. Uh, it was a bit of uh, – last season was a bit of uh, like a test year for the Ducks. I still think – if they have a bad season, I still think uh, Greg Cronin will keep his job. He's cold as ice for me. Yeah, I'm I'm of that same opinion. I think that, you know, he just got there. I just got there. I just got here. Mm-hmm. Um, he did play a season with Anaheim. It was a struggle of a year. But I think that it's too early to pull the plug on him just yet. Um, so I think cold as ice is fair. All right. Um, I guess I'll do Utah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we got Andre Torney. Um, so it, it shows an Arizona logo for the guys who are watching this. For the audio listeners, it means nothing. But um, So Andre Torgny has been the coach uh, since the rebuild has started. The very first season of the Coyotes' teardown, uh, Torgny was the head coach. Like, Tockett left through free agency after that. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, Torgny was named the guy. I'm going to put him in warm. I would agree with that. I, I don't think he's safe, but I don't think he's on in danger of losing his job. If the team doesn't take a step this year and finishes bottom five in the league again, I think that there's a chance we see it happen. But mm-hmm. I think all signs point to this team improving. Yeah, you know what's funny on this? It re- literally says Andre Torney has not coached a single game ever, and <laughs> because it, because all the Arizona stats are archived, so now. Andre Torney's coaching record is zero zero zero. Yeah, it is actually. That's actually right. It says he was hired on. Get this, April eighteenth, twenty twenty four, which is not wow, true. Look at that. It is true, but it's not true at the same time. It's, you know, it's it's what a it's what a what a what mm-hmm. a relocation is to you. All right, next we have Boston. Jim Montgomery. Now, here's the thing about Jim Montgomery. Excellent, excellent coach. I have a feeling though, if Boston struggles out the gate. Or if they 
or another early exit, I think we could see this become a flaming hot situation. I can see that too. But I I will put him in flaming hot for now, but I might switch that after. It they're re- they're talking about ex- extending him though. Yeah, so I'm actually well, yeah, I know I remember that's to tell me. We'll, we'll, we'll go. Uh, we'll we'll go warm. Uh, we might switch it after, but I'm gonna go warm because if they if they they need to have a they need to at least get to the conference finals for me to think that he's safe. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think that I think I'm, him at warm is completely fair. Mm-hmm. Brindamore, this is an interesting one. Um, he's not on fire. They just extended him. They did just extend him. You're correct. I'm gonna go warm. Okay. Like I can see flaming hot though. Mm-hmm. I I always say like no 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 job in the NHL is safe ever. Like yeah, no one's guaranteed to, to like we could see John Cooper get fired fired in week one of the season and we and. Week one? I don't know about week one. Like you know what I mean, though. Like like we like m- m- uh, October uh, first month, but like you know what I mean. Like yeah, yeah. Um, no job is safe. I feel Brendan were getting extended helps him. I think that he, he will. He's in warm, but I don't think he's in. He's not. He's not nine. He's not one hundred percent safe. Yeah, definitely not. It's more than zero for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Chicago, Luke Richardson. I feel like it's cold as ice. Chicago can have a little, as good a year or as bad a year as they want. They'll they'll be keeping him. Yeah, they will be. I, I see them doing. Yeah, it. Richardson has a has had a tall task, and he still has a tall task. So, and then and, and they really do like him. So I feel like he's safe. All right. Next up, Jared Bednar for the Colorado Avalanche. LeBlanc, you might find this interesting. Flaming hot. Flaming hot. Ooh. This is a little bit of a take. I think if Colorado starts off slow, they struggle. They're really bad. I think there's a chance that Bednar gets let go. If they lose yet again in the playoffs early, I think Bednar could go. I'm I'm not I don't I'm not disagreeing with you on this because I feel like that could happen. I, if, if they're a first round exit, I can see them making a, a change of like a change of pace kind of coach. Like, you know, like Bed, Bed, Bednar. I always I always said before they won the cup, I never really saw the hype in Bednar as a coach. And I'm even after I still don't see the hype in Bednar as a coach. I think he's a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach though. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Dean Evanson just got hired. Like literally just got the job a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think he'll be good for that Columbus group. Um, he's firm but fair, uh, and he he know and he gets he, he's known to get the best out of his players. I agree. I agree. I think that just hired is completely right. Dallas Pete DeBauer. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say flaming hot too. Maybe even on fire. I, don't, I wouldn't say on fire because like. If the Stars make the conference finals, do you think, which is their expectation, do you think they would fire him? Probably not. Yeah, so, like, if he was on fire, if they, like, if on fire for DeBoer's, like, cup or bust. Yeah, pretty much. I uh, Yeah, you're actually right. I agree with that. But I think anything short of that, he gets fired. Anything short of a conference final run, he gets fired. Yeah, and Pete DeBoer's known for having really good teams in, the, in short stints. Then in long stints, they just get tired of them. Yep. Ooh, Detroit. This is a tough one because you look at you look at the um, oh my god um I oh wrong button. I am going to say Derek Lawan's done a pretty good job, but I do think oh, I'm putting warm. I could see them firing them if they don't. Yeah, no, if, if Detroit starts slow, he's gone. It's possible. I know. 100%. I'm going to put him with the flame and hot. Really? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Like, it's tough oh. because, like, if it, like if they do start bad, I could see him firing him. If they don't, if they have a, a regression, you could argue he might be fired. But, as I say, 
he's one of Stevie's guys. So as long as Stevie's a DM, I think he's safe. Well, this depends on Sway- Swayman. This depends on Iserman's um, expectations for this year. Mm-hmm. I feel like, again, like for DeBauer, you said it's cup or bust. If you put Lalonde in Flaming Hot, it's like playoffs or bust. Yeah. But if Detroit doesn't make the playoffs, I don't think they fire Lalonde. Yeah. I think the, the fan base would want to fire Lalonde if they don't make playoffs, but I don't think Stevie would. So I'm gonna, we'll put him in warm. Unless, unless, if, um, again, as you said, they start off slow and they're, they're significantly worse than they were last year. Mm-hmm. But then again, like they didn't make the moves to me that make them better, a lot better. Yeah, Same. we'll go warm because like if Detroit has it like regresses to the point of like where they were the previous year, then I think they that might be they might consider making a change. Yes, I agree with that. All right, all right. Um, I'm next. Florida is up next. There's some weird order here. You haven't heard Calgary or Buffalo. They're at the end. I don't Sorry. know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we got Florida up next. Paul Maurice, he's he, I think he's cold as ice. I would agree. He just won a Stanley, just won a Stanley Cup. Cup. The Stanley Cup gives you leeway. gives you a long leash. Yes, it does. So, he's cold as ice. That's all we can leave it at. Chris Knobloch. If Edmonton does not get back to the Cup final, that's on fire. Really? Well, we'll go flame it hot. He just got hired. I know he's got hired, but you, listen, you have this is Edmonton. This is like a last dance situation for Edmonton. That's true. Yeah, you got a point. We 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 even said that in in in, in this podcast. This is the last dance, for Edmonton, and I think flame and hot. Like if if you saw, they are they got rid of Jay Woodcroft. They got rid of Jay Woodcroft really early during that bad bad start. It's cup or bust. It is, it is. You're at, you're actually kind of right. I don't know if I'd go on fire though. We'll go flame and hot. Yeah, I'm with you there. All right. This order is weird. All right. <laughs> the idea. You got, you got Patrick Wah. Uh, I think it's going in the order of Edmonton or, or Florida, Edmonton, then Long Island. That's right. kind of how they're doing. It. I, I I didn't make this order. Blame blame the tier maker. <laughs> Yeah, don't blame LeBlanc, even though you're going to anyway. Um, Islanders, Patrick Waugh, I think, I want to say it's, I want to say cold as ice. I could see it being warm, though. I think he's fine. I think he's safe. Just got there. Like, just got there. So. The Islanders' expectation is playoffs or to be in the playoff race. Yeah, so as long as they're there, I think that Patrick Waugh is fine. And I think they will be there, so I think he's fine. And, like, Waugh, like, like, you say, like, Knobloch, Knobloch and Waugh, like, they both got hired midseason. They both have different expectations, though. That's why Knobloch is in flame and hot, because they're cover bust. The Islanders are not, are not cover bust, though. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. The LA, right. the LA Kings... Jim Hiller took over for uh, Tom McClellan. I'm not gonna lie, and I think, and I, I this is just me. Um, Jim Hiller has, has gotten a lot of criticism, and I feel like he's not LA's like guy. He it could be. I think he's warm. I'll put him in warm. Hiller did not look great coaching down the stretch. If LA is bumpy, they might make a change. Yeah, we're gonna see. We're gonna we're gonna see that. That's gonna be interesting. Uh, LA is one of those teams that it's gonna be a lot of questions this year if they can stay contending. All right, next up, Minnesota. Um, they have John Hines, uh, who was hired midway through last year. I think you put it in warm. Yeah, that's fair. Bald, bald. bald. Yeah, he's one bald dude. Um, I could, not going to lie to you, I think he could be put in ice cold, but he also could be put in flaming hot. Um, I think they're fine. If they, if they don't make the playoffs, I could see them letting him go, but I think he's probably fine. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never, I never understood firing Dean Evanson from Minnesota. I never understood it. Uh, but Heinz, Heinz did a decent job last year in Minnesota coaching wise. Um, but yeah. Ooh. He got him back in the race, so I he guess did. that's good enough for something. 
Ooh, Marty St. Louis. Montreal. The seat is getting warmer and warmer. If Mo- like I always said, what's going to happen the day the fans turn on Marty St. Louis? It's going to happen. And I'll be honest, I'm tempted to put them here, but I'm going to put them here because of all the injuries they've gone through so far. So it, it's the seat's getting warmer, warmer as the years go by, though, for Marty St. Louis. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna. I think he's in warm. Yeah, and I think but I, he's not as warm as some of the other coaches in there. Yeah, I will agree with that. I feel like Montreal's still in a rebuild, so I'm. But but Marty, they, they got to get better. They need to be better this year. If they're not better this year, yeah. It's similar to Andre Torney. Like they want to see improvement. Yes, and it's funny because both of those guys like started the rebuild at the same time. Pretty much, so. yeah. Yeah, like the same year they were both like took a horrible step back. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think warm is fair. All right, Nashville. I got Andrew Brunette. Flaming hot. Are you really? Because I'm not gonna lie. I think Buddy's in the freezer. You think so? I don't know. I feel like he did a really good job last year. Um, if they. Did. But the expectations are higher now because of the moves they've made. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest qualm. But I feel like would Trotz fire Brunette if they get off to a bad start? I don't think so. I don't know. I could see them in warm, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to put I, I uh, put them in warm for now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that it happens. To, it's gonna happen. To, it happens to every coach. Yes. So. All right. Uh, Sheldon Keith for the New Jersey Devils. Buddy just got hired. And I think it's a good hire for the Devils. And yeah, and finally getting to coach outside of the media market of Toronto. Don't flip me off. Um. But yeah. Uh, sorry. I don't flip me off. My bad. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, right, let's go Yeah, but I think I think it's a good move for the Devils going forward. I think he'll be a good, uh, yeah. lot better system than last year. Yeah, Love Joel. Hundred percent agree. agree. Uh, Peter Laviolette up next for the Rangers. Second year coach, just won the President's Trophy, but if the Ranger, uh, if the Rangers fall flat. Might be flaming hot. Might be flaming hot. Though he, I, like if the Rangers, mm. they did say, they did say, and this is one thing that we kind of forgot to talk about. This is apparently going to be the last year of a part of this Rangers core. Really? Maybe Lavi lets you in there? Maybe. Like if the Rangers, the Rangers don't get to the final this year. Uh, this year, they're they're going, they're they're tearing, not tearing it down, but it will be a massive retool. I think they are close. I think Laviolette should be close to the the bottom of Flaming Hot or the top of Warm. Put him in like the... he he's he's getting a little crispy there. Here, yeah, well, here, well, these are not ordered, but we'll order them after for sure. He's getting a little crispy in in, in there. Yeah. That's that's all I'll say there. But yeah, yeah. we're gonna order right, these, to then we're gonna do this, or we're gonna do this actually. I think that's more appropriate. Um, Travis Green, my boy, just got hired. Coach just got hired. Um, hoping for a better season, better second, second full job. It's it's kind of funny how Travis Green has had both his coaching gigs in Canada. But um, yeah, no, we're ho- I'm hoping Travis Green once again, like Dean Nevison, he's fair. He's well, actually, no, that's not entirely true. Well, he's well, he yeah, was, still with Jersey. Well, he wasn't the full- <laughs> I proved you wrong. He wasn't the full no, keep- yeah, he wasn't the full time head coach though. Um, yeah, but yeah, no. Uh, sorry, I was trying to fuck. He startled me. Um, he's, he, he's tough but fair, and I feel I feel like he's all business, all business, and then but he's still. Like once again, Green is also known for getting the best out, getting the best out of his players. He's he's, he's kind of a tactician, kind of like Jock Martin, actually, which is kind of crazy. But uh, he was just hired. I don't think, and I think hopefully I think he'll be a better 
year this year for Ottawa for sure. I hope for your sake he does well. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully it all pans out. All right. Philadelphia. We got John Tortorella. LeBlanc, you're going to be really surprised about this. All right. I think you could see him getting a little, a little, little crispy, maybe a little bit, little bit heated up. Maybe really. But I'm going cold as ice. Yeah, I think Buddy's in the freezer. He is absolutely in the freezer. Now I see the other side to that. He's. He's not deep in the freezer. Like, he's not deep in there. Like, he doesn't have icicles all over his face. No, he's a little, you know, he's below room temperature. But, you know, he's not like the, you know, he's not, he's not warm. He's still cold. You know, he's in that range. I think that Philadelphia is going into another year where it's still not really expectation. Well, there's expectations, but, like, if they start off bad that is, like, the best thing that could happen to them. And, honestly, I don't think they will, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, so, we're going to see what happens with Torts. I even saw rumors that there was a chance that Tortorella was going to go up into the, uh, like, become in management, go up higher in management, not be a coach anymore. I could see that happening. Um, but I think right now... He's cold as ice. He's in the freezer. Yeah, but, yeah. I should, I should have put just the tier called Buddies in the Freezer. <laughs> Buddies in the... Yeah. Um, or you should have put like, room temperature. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so hey, hey, I Pittsburgh, who is a uh, Mike Sullivan. Hey, Evan, how does that Sam Smith song go? Fire on fire. Yeah. He's, he's on. Gone. Like if, if Pittsburgh misses again, he's gone. Like there's there's no way. I think this is, I think, I think regardless, if so, Sullivan either he steps down or he gets fired. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, this team is clearly, again, we're not high on Pittsburgh. We've we've said that, but I think that you know, if they miss for the third year um, in a row, yeah, he's he's done. He has to be. He's been there for such a long time. He has to be. Mm-hmm. He's been there for all he's there since twenty sixteen. So yep. he's been there for almost eight years. One of, it's, he'd be he's one of the longest tenured coaches in the league. That you have. He was hired on December twelfth, twenty fifteen. Him and John Cooper are up there. Mm-hmm. All right, um, LeBlanc, I'm going to save your energy here with these next two. You got Seattle and San Jose, Ryan Warsawski and Dan Balsma. We're literally just hired. So I'll take the wheel with San Jose. I like Worsofsky. He was a assistant coach. Uh, I think he was the head coach when Chicago, the Chicago Wolves won the AHL championship. He has experience with young guys. I think that that's a good hiring. Um, I like Seattle's too. Uh, I love the Dan Bowsma hiring. Hey, some say, oh, well, he's stubborn. But yeah, well, he's also, he also, also has a Stanley Cup. So... Um. Yeah, he was he was a great coach for Coachella the past couple years. I feel like him no, getting to know the young guys in the system is going to help them um, up top. When you know you've got guys like Shane Wright, uh, uh, was it Riker Evans, uh, Kai, uh, Ty Cartier. Um, this is going to help. This is going to help Seattle a lot. I really do think Balsma Balsma is a good coach in the right circumstance. This, I think, is the right circumstance. I, I think Bowsma might have been my favorite hire of the offseason. Yeah, probably. Not going to lie to you. Um, I guess I get St. Louis. Uh, Drew Bannister, I think he's probably cold. Yeah. I would say... He just got, I would he's say... one of those guys who, like, he wasn't just hired, but he just got there. I feel like he's, like, in between Chicago and Anaheim. Probably, yeah. Because I would move Philly ahead of Chicago. By the way, yeah, that's fair. Um, Drew Banzer came in mid-season, took over for uh, Craig Berube. We're gonna see on this list a little bit later. Um, he he did pretty well. He did pretty well in St. Louis. Um, he, I mean, they were the best team to not miss the playoffs. Yeah, he had a record of 30, 30 and nineteen, which is good for about sixty percent of the wins. So. It's not bad. I feel like they'll give him the full year this year, and I don't think they're... Yeah. 
I don't think they get in, but yeah, I think that he's he's cold. Right. John Cooper's a fun one. This is all you, right? Yeah. No, this is you. Oh, no, no, it is me. It is oh, me. You're right. No, 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 it is. Yeah. John Cooper, I would love to put him at cold ice, but this is the NHL. Oh, you know, we're, I'm going to put him at the top of cold as ice. If you really? only, only re, like, if they miss, they're not going to fire Cooper. I don't see them firing Cooper if they miss for the first time in, I think, almost 10 years. Yeah, 2017, I think, was the last time they missed. Yeah, because like, he was. Yeah, I don't know about that, but it's the NHL. I don't. I don't think they would fire. Like, if they just miss, they're not going to fire him. Probably. If they miss by a lot, maybe. If they will, if they if they finish like seven for six in the Atlantic, then we can then, then we can talk about firing. Yes. Yes. I don't know. Uh, Craig Brube just hired. Here's the thing, he though. Just got hired. You you're you're in Toronto. You're always no. I'm just kidding. You're always you're always on, on fire. fire. You're always. Here, pretty, Put him at the top. Yeah, just, just hired. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's like the most fire, on fire, just hired. Yeah. Yeah. On <laughs> fire, recent hire. Like, right. I think everybody says that. Oh, yeah, you have a job. You're you're in Toronto, though, so. Yeah, but I think Barube will do well with the Leafs. Yes. Hopefully. Uh, knock on knock on. Knock on wood. Rick, Rick Tockett, I feel like he's cold. Yeah, they just they just came back. They made the playoffs for the first time in like what a while, six seven four years. Four it's four years, but like it was like the second time in ten years. So yeah, before that it was like twenty twelve. Mm-hmm. So I I think that um it's good to see. I I yeah he's definitely in cold, hundred percent. Ooh, Bruce Cassidy. Bruce Cassidy. I like I'm not high on Vegas, so this is all you. I'm gonna put him in warm. I think he still has that cup with him, but he's not Maurice anymore. I'm gonna put if him they finish a first round exit or they miss the playoffs. Like some people are thinking they are, there's a chance. Not saying it's gonna happen, but there's a chance. hmm I like I said, like if he if they miss drastically we can talk about we can talk about this. Uh, I got Washington now. Spencer Carberry said, "I if they miss. They're not going to fire him. He's he's pretty safe, in my opinion." Yeah, I doubt it. I think he's safe. I honestly, I would put him uh just just above ship, just above Philly there. Okay, yeah, I know, that's right. Um, and then Winnipeg Scott Arneal, he was just hired, so. Yeah, you can get that out of there. Uh, I think it was a good hiring, though, by Winnipeg. Ryan Huska. I I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Ryan Huska's coaching style, um, but Calgary's trying to be bad. Calgary's not going to be good this year. They're they're pretty safe. If you're not a fan of it, then I sh- it should work well in Calgary. Yeah, because they're going to be bad. <laughs> so. Uh, and then finally, Lindy Ruff for Buffalo. Um, again, I'm sorry, Sabres, Sabres and Flames fans. You guys, like, it probably felt weird you listening to this and, like, we're going alphabetical order, then we just skip your two teams. Um, he's in just hired, but I don't think – I'm not a huge fan of it. I think, we, I think it. We, we both have not been fans of this hire. Does it and, and 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 I think honestly the general consensus is like people don't like this hire. This is a hire to get fill seats. Yeah, I, th- I think we've said this yeah. multiple, multiple multiple times on this on this program here. But yeah, um, so our only on fire coach is Mike Sullivan. Yeah. No, I, I, anything you want to debate? Anything you want to switch? I probably move Philly up a little bit. Like. Probably up to Anaheim. Really? I think there's a chance he could. He could. He's not that cold, but he's not warm either. No, I am going to. I we're gonna move New York up to Flame and Hot at the bottom. That's what I think too. Yeah, I was. Yeah, again, as I said, like they're at the bottom of Flaming Hot or the top of Warm. Mm-hmm. So however you wanna go there, I think everything else is 
fine. Yeah, because, like, I'm not putting the guys who were just hired in, like, in a category. Because, technically, I would love to put just for everybody, oh, he's flaming hot, it's Toronto, if you do bad, you're out the door. Because Well, and people would probably agree with you, too. Mm. There would be some people who would agree with you. But, yeah, I'm with you. You gotta, you gotta, like, you can say what you want about some of these coaches with previous history, but in the end, we don't know how they're going to do with their new teams. Like, you know, things could be completely different. One coach could be really good with one team and then be horrible with another, or one coach could be horrible with another and be really good with one. Mm-hmm. So, I'm gonna, you don't know. I'm gonna ask, styles, them don't. I'm going to ask you this right now, because it's, uh, it's a hot take. Who will be the first coach fired this year? That's really hard to answer because, like, it all depends on a team struggling out of the gate. Mm-hmm. And you got to predict that, and that's hard to predict, and I get that. But just, just for the sake of this program, this program, um, you see, I don't know if Sullivan could get fired during the season. Do you think that could happen? Could happen. It's happened before. He was hired in the middle of the season. Did he? Yeah, he was. Hi- yeah. Like I said, he was hired. I have it right here. He was hired on December twelfth, twenty fifteen. Oh wow! He's been around for a while. Um, if I had to choose, a well, black, I don't know. <laughs> I I um, I am. I could, I could really see Colorado or Pittsburgh. I think Jim Hiller will be, will be the first coach fired. You think so? Mm-hmm. Well, they said they're not going to play that one four one style. Yeah, well, that's literally his system, so I don't know what they're going to do. For one three one, not one four one. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that is go away keychain. That is our our coach tier ranking, hot seat tier ranking. Um, LeBlanc, what are we doing next? Well, we have another one. Actually, we got to do. We do. The September September. Or tier list. Let's get into it. All right, we got our September 2024 tier list. Um, this is our last thing we're going to talk about today, I think. I hope. Yeah, no, it will be. Um, so we did this for August just because of how the episodes went. We weren't able to do one for September. We were hoping to, but, you know, obviously things couldn't work out. So it's October 2nd, and you're going to see our September one. In October. Uh, So we're going to go in um, every other. So LeBlanc will go first. I'll go second. Uh, But when we get to our favorite teams, obviously, we'll take that over um, and talk about that. So I'll do Philly, Utah. LeBlanc will do Ottawa. So you get the gist. All right. Uh, LeBlanc, you get Colorado first. And our six columns are cup contenders, playoff locks, playoffs likely, in the hunt. Not bad, but playoffs unlikely. And James Hagen season. So, again, these are our six columns from last time. So, LeBlanc, get the ball rolling here. I'm trying as fast as I can. I think Colorado is a playoff lock. Um, I don't really think they have much weaknesses other than their goaltending. Heading the season, my fault, my opinion on the on the Avs hasn't really changed since we did this last month. Not a cup contender? Uh, I don't think. Th- I think they're, they're, they're playoff locks. I don't think they're a cup contender. Okay, interesting. I'll put them in there. As long as Gorgie gets in the net, I do not have faith. <laughs> I get. I guess that is. Uh, it's a fair statement you can make. I'm trying to find uh, our August one real quick before I discuss here. Uh, but I got Chicago. While I try and find it, all right. Here we go. Uh, so we had, yeah, we had Colorado and playoff lock. So that does not change. Uh, Chicago, James Hagen season, baby. Um, again, they're going to be bad. They're going to be worse. I think they're going to be a little bit better, but they're still going to be worse. For sure. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, right. Columbus, let's get him in James Hagen season, baby. Put him, put, 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 put them, not above Chicago, though, because Chicago is definitely higher in the James. Wait. Well, no, put Columbus higher, because then Chicago's yes, worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go, there we go. All right, so it's exactly like um, no changes so far to what we've done um, so far. I get St. Louis up next. And, again, this isn't a random order, so I 
sorry, I probably should have specified. Um, you're probably wondering why are they doing Colorado and then St. And then, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, St. Louis, last time we had them or last month, we had them in playoffs or not bad, but playoffs unlikely. I think since then they did the they did the Holloway and Broberg. Yes, they did. I think. Um. I could see for right now I'm gonna put them in the same column, but I could see them. I could see people putting them in the hunt. Mm-hmm. That's where I stand, honestly. Boston. Your team. Yeah, Boston. I'm doing this because Swayman is not signed. Playoffs likely. At the top of that, yeah. I would say. Um, yeah. That's the only thing that changes. Because if Swayman's not there, they're not a lock. They could. They could. They're not, not a lock. They get. If they get some injuries, they could. They could. They could miss if Swayman's not there. I'm not gonna lie to you. You look at some of the advanced analytics. They were kind of carried a little bit by that tandem. Mm-hmm. With some of the analytics I saw. So. I don't know. How, I don't know if people are going to be like, "Oh, you know, it's advanced analytics. Who cares?" But again, that is something you gotta keep in mind. Uh, Montreal, they're not James Hagens. Um, I put them in. Um, not uh, actually. You know what? Because of the line eight. No, I think they're still. I think there's. I I think they're worse than St. Louis. So. I yeah, they were in our original one, but I will say this: if um. They get a lot more injuries. It's James Hagen's season. Come on. Yeah, no, that's with no doubt. It's common in Montreal for that to happen. I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it's it's unfortunately common for them to get hurt. So. Yeah, it, it's like it's the Habs injuries happen every year. It's it's just it's. I don't want to say it's tradition, but it feels like it's tradition. It does. It does. It's unfortunate tradition, but it, it feels like one for sure. All right, Vancouver. Now, last time we did this, we didn't, we didn't. The goaltending is now a big question mark in Vancouver. Yeah, playoffs likely ahead of Boston. We're putting them with. We're putting them with that. Um, yeah, so they get Lankin and is probably their starting goalie right now. Mm. And and Demko has to be really careful with what he's doing with his um, current injury. He had a setback, and he was another setback. That's a big. Big, big setback. Yes. So he has to be really careful now. So we may not see him for the start of the season, but we'll yeah. see how that unravels. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Playoffs likely is completely justified. Washington. Um, Washington, I'm going to put in the hunt, and they're the first team that we put in the hunt. Yep, I, I, I think they'll be in the hunt. They'll be around. They'll be kicking in yeah. there. I think um, they're going to they're going to be competitive for sure. Again, they're going to be in the hunt. But um, I think that my biggest question is: Are all these young guys, or all not young guys, are all these new guys going to mesh together? Yeah, because we've seen it before, where we, we have a team that hits a bunch of new guys and they do not mesh well at all. Yep. So we're going to see how that goes, but I don't know. All right, yeah. you get the Devils. That's a good one. Uh, I think the Devils are a playoff lock. Really, that's different from last, from our last one. I know. I, my opinion has really changed on the Devils. You look at the roster defensively, just just loaded, loaded. Uh, goaltending, Markstrom. I think Markstrom will do really well. Um, and yeah, I think the Devils are a playoff lock. I would have them where, yeah, I would put them below Colorado because the Metro is still a pretty tough division. It seems like it's almost impossible for the Devils to mess. By we said, but we, we said, said that, that we said that last year though too. We did, but it feels like this year, like they improved everything. Yeah, they improved, they, they they went out, they fixed all the needs. They got a brand new coach. This uh, team looks awesome from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Anaheim, um, I'm putting them in not bad, but playoffs unlikely. But they're at the bottom of that. Interesting. I think they have a fun young core. They can be competitive. I think that they're going to. Be fun to watch. Calgary, you know what? You know what season it is, Evan. James Higgins. James Higgins season. Uh, I put them a. I'd put them above Columbus, though. 
Yeah, they were in that same slot um, last time. This is looking relatively similar to our tier list Mm -hmm. before. But again, that shows that, you know, in the first, like, beginning of the seasons, our opinions don't change too much. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia! It's funny how this turned out. Um, I'm going um, not bad. Mitch Goff looks good, LeBlanc. Does he? Mitch Goff looks good. Um, Listen. They're 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 not bad, but in the but unlikely playoffs. Okay, okay. But I think I think they're between St. Louis and Montreal right now. That's fair. I, I'll agree with that. Um, but LeBlanc, I could really see them making it. Like I could really see them. It's it. it's hard to gauge Philadelphia. Like it's kind of, they're kind of like Buffalo. They're really hard to gauge right now. Yeah, I don't know. Urson looks really good in the preseason. It's the same roster from last year that proved a lot of people wrong. I don't know. I could see them making it, but like I'm actually kind of hoping we're bad this year because I want to. I want a high draft pick. Mm-hmm. If we get a high draft pick, that changes my opinion on everything this team's done. Mm-hmm. All right, you get Vegas in the hunt below Washington. Yes, as I, of right now. I'm not high on Vegas entering the season. I think I've been I've been saying that for a while now. Goaltending is a nah. Um, defense Maybe defense is old, and the center core is good. The wingers are bleh. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with that. Yeah. Carolina. Last time we had them playoffs, likely. I think they're probably still in that column. Yeah. Where you put they, where, no, where, no, no. I could see them. I could see Boston and Vancouver making it over Carolina. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I got it. yeah. Ooh, the Islanders are in the hunt. Over I have I in my opinion, I think they're better than the Capitals. Yeah, I would I would go there too. They're uh, not more experienced, but they have a much more um well chemistry team while Washington's a lot of newer players. So we're gonna see how that goes. Um but yeah I think they're definitely in the hunt for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh Winnipeg. My opinion hasn't changed. I think they're playoff locks. Yeah, I think I would put them below New Jersey. Yeah, that's where I have them. I mm-hmm. think yeah. They're locks. Hopefully. If Hellebuck gets hurt then maybe not, but the Kings, I would put them in the hunt. And I would put yeah. them between Washington and Vegas. Yeah, this is looking really similar to the one that we made. Yeah, but, like yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm tended to put the Kings behind Vegas, but I think I'm going to keep it like this for now. No, I, th- I, think, I think that they're might be underrating Vegas, which is could turn out to be catastrophic. Um, but um, I think that the Kings are in a fair spot. I think they're definitely below teams in the East, but they have a better chance of making it because of how weak that West is. Yeah. Seattle. I'm going to go in the hunt. I'm going to go actually dead in the in the middle of all these teams in there, between La- LA and Washington. That's fair. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a right move. Tampa... Oh, Tampa, Tampa, Tampa. Here's the thing. I think I I I think it's pretty clear where they should go. Tampa I want to put them in playoffs likely, but I feel like I want I might put them at the top of in the hunt. Really? Well, we'll put them playoffs likely at the very end, the very end. Yeah, that's where they are in our in our original in our one from last month. I think I think they are likely to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're one of the most likely teams in there, but they should should mm-hmm. playoffs. All right, uh, Toronto. I'm putting them in the same column. I'm, I'm I'm a little higher on Toronto than I was before, but I think they're still in the same slot. I I you could argue that they are a lock, but I would say where the, I you have them right now is perfect. Yeah. Right, um, uh, I think the next two are just cup contenders. Edmonton, bo- yeah, cup contender. So just put them both up there. 
Edmonton and Florida. Um, I would put Edmonton ahead of Florida yeah. right now, personally. Pittsburgh. Not bad, but playoffs unlikely. Put them between Philly and Montreal. Yeah. Again, we are not a podcast that is very high on Pittsburgh. I think with Crosby, they'll be competitive. But, again, as I said, like this team just doesn't seem that exciting to me. I can see the comments now. A Flyers fan and a Sens fan. Two teams we own. No wonder you hate us. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly why. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Nashville. Um, the Nashville Predators, I think, are in playoffs likely. I think they're right here. Huh? What do you think? I would put them above Carolina. Yeah, you're probably right now. Yeah, I think with, with, with who they have, with what they have. But they're, like, similar to Washington, though. They got a few new guys in there. Are they going to mesh well? Yeah, but I feel like... Nashville, before the changes, were a better team than Washington. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Rangers, right. cup contenders. Yeah, but they're probably at the bottom. Of they're, they're at the bottom of cup contender. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, again, as we said, like this is going to be the last year of this Rangers core. We're going to really see what what they're made of. It's the uh, last dance with a lot of teams in that cup contender. Why did you it. bunch these three up together? Why did you bunch? Oh boy, <laughs> the big, the three amigos. <laughs> we got the next three Atlantic teams up here. Um, LeBlanc, do you want to do Detroit so then you get Ottawa? Sure. Yeah, oh, we'll. Okay. I'll right. uh, put Detroit at the top of in the hunt. Yes. Uh, I feel like Detroit. Detroit took a big step last year. Um. They and analytically they were shooting at a very high percentage. Uh, can they replicate it? That's that's the big question. Like if they can replicate that shooting percentage, they're probably going to make the playoffs. Um, probably. but most teams can't replicate shooting percentages year by year. So you look at Seattle; they really. They that, that's, really and that's why I feel like they're going to be this year's Seattle. So I still think they'll be in the hunt, though. Yes, I agree. I think they will be. Buffalo will also be in the hunt, but they're not as high. Low, low, low key. I put them. But I would. Uh, yeah, that's about fair. I put them. I could maybe argue L.A. over Buffalo because they play in a weaker division. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to like tier rank like that section of teams because again, like as you said, like the West is weaker, and we have L.A. towards the bottom of that. But you know, again, yeah. And I'm going to say it here, and I'm going to say it again, put Ottawa at the top of in the hunt. That's where they were last time. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not crowning them playoffs, but they will, they will definitely be in that wild card race. Yeah, they, they will be, they will be competing for sure. Hopefully, if everything goes right, that should be how it goes. Uh. I get the Sharks. Sharks are James Hagen season. Um, they are at the bottom, the dead yeah, bottom of this. They're. Race. I don't want to be better, mean. But you know, mean, but they booty Which cheeks. Is fine. Which is fine. Um, they they got a nice young. They'll be fun to watch, though. They'll be really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, hundred percent. Dallas Cup contenders put them between Florida and New York. Yep. I agree. That's where we had them last time. The top four teams, I don't think, have changed. Like, nothing has swayed me to think that they are going to be, those four teams are going to be worse. Yeah, that entire column is the same. I think it's the middle two that have changed. Uh, Mm -hmm. I get Utah, my other favorite team. LeBlanc, I'm higher on Utah now. Um, I'm going to put them right here. Or not right there, right here. I will agree with that. Ooh, okay. All right, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, they're between the Capitals and the Kraken. I think that Utah could surprise some people. So, yeah, I'm excited to see that, how they're going to do. I am. Okay. Oh, I am Minnesota's last team. And I honestly, my opinion is kind of swayed on Minnesota. Put them in the hunt between Utah and Seattle. Ooh, 
That's one of the big changes. They were in um, the bottom column, not the, well, I, the the playoffs unlikely. Yeah, I think I gave Minnesota a bit of a bad rap last time we did this. I've looked through the roster because I'm doing my you know do my standings predictions now, and I've watched watched one of the preseason games. They don't they don't look horrible. Like them getting back to the playoffs, I don't like. It, they'll be they'll be with the race. I don't think they'll be highly in the race though. So that's why I had them low like, low as list. Yeah, I can get behind that for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, and that is our September 2024 pre list or pre list tier list. Our, uh, no. If you want to see it fully on Instagram, you can at Norblock Pod LeBlock. Any changes you want to make though? Not re- really. Honestly. Uh, I knew Philly above St. Louis. That's really my only. Yeah, one. I I don't want to look as biased, but if you're saying that, then yeah, I agree. And then I I yeah, I don't really got much left on here. Like I don't really have many issues. Um, nope. do I don't you... have any qualms. Yeah, I don't. Changes. Yeah, but um, a, the big the big riser for us on this is looks like it's Minnesota actually. Yeah, they rose a lot. Uh, the Devils rose up two. Same, yeah. Devils, Devils went up. Uh, Colorado, sorry, Boston went down. Vancouver went down. Um, I think all of our teams in the hunt are the same except for Minnesota. Yeah, apart from that, just like a few like changes between how we feel about certain teams, but the mm-hmm. most of those teams are to general consensus, like they are in the same area. Mm-hmm. I low key low. Is Chicago better than Columbus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of agree with that. We're gonna see. We're gonna like Columbus. It really sucks because obviously everything that's gone down. Yeah, it's it's but it's horrible. Um, I don't know. Like you look at Columbus's roster, it's young, but I think Chicago has more of that experience. You know more of what you're gonna get from a lot of that. So, yeah, that's that. That's our list. And honestly, I I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with this list. Now, yeah. next next list will probably be like a more realistic list because we'll actually be seeing these teams play. We'll be having uh, – we'll do it probably around the end of October. We will have a more of a perspective on where teams are currently at. So that makes things very interesting. All right. Uh, that will conclude this episode of the Northern Block Podcast. This is a long one. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around and tuning in with us uh, for this episode. Uh, if you did enjoy, subscribe if you're watching. Uh, if you're listening, give us a good review. Tell your friends. Follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Uh, follow the Nord Block Pod Instagram at Nord Block Pod. Uh, we have been posting a lot on there. We're getting into our season feels. And anyways, that will do it for this one. Thank you, guys. Peace. Ciao. Uh, Let me flip this script. I feel privileged for all who can witness this. I am close to divine. Know the moment is mine. Need an omen or sign. I'm a back sound. To all the squares that ask around. We getting it. My skills pay me. Trying to get a million, baby. With an adopted flow that God gave me. Me now. Tell whoever run us that this spot is temporary till I take it. It's mine. I'm selfish. Your will. Tell me some of my wealth tip. So when we cash out soon, I'm just investing. Hey, no yes, man. I've been a legend since before mom and dad had me and was best friends. I chew through comp, don't test them. I, I chew on trash, cause after that, I bless them. Huh. I just do what I do. Huh. You see me? I just do what I do. Hey. I just do what I do. I don't know about you. I just do what I do. Check.